Hello, and welcome to Lesson 8 on Minecraft in Unity. We're going to be talking about biomes today. This is going to be so much more fun than whatever else we normally talk about. Um, so first things first, uh, last time we had the issue where uh, the corners were very heavily weighted. I've gone ahead and unweighted the corners, so now the only four positions we take into account are the orthogonal neighbors. Um, so that means that we occasionally get very uh, old-school Minecraft cliffs. Um, so uh, those of you who played Minecraft earlier on may remember these cliffs very well. They are very, very similar to the original Minecraft algorithm, because as far as I know, that's the original Minecraft algorithm. <laughs> uh, and the way I did that was that I just... Uh, um, Uh, when we were doing the height in the chunk, come on, when we were de defining this height, I got rid of the 3x things, uh, and I just I just do 1x thing and 1z thing, and I average them together. Uh, so that works out well uh, in comparison. Um, they both have the same flaws, but this flaw tends to be less noticeable, so... All right, now the other thing that we needed to do uh, is I actually, down here in Get Brushes 4, I actually made it so that we assign more brushes to mountains than anything else. So that means that we got more brushes for mountains. And the reason is because I wanted these brushes to be at different heights. So previously we had this as something like ground height plus random dot value minus 2 or something. Um, and now what we do is we just have a weighted random value based on ground height and uh, uh, we don't need to worry about going over ground height we don't need to add in anything to make us go over ground height because most ground heights are going to be sloped downward um, or not most but a lot of them are going to be sloped downward and that'll work out fine um, so random dot value times random dot value just gets a random value that's significantly weighted towards zero so 1 minus that gets a value that's significantly weighted towards 1, which means that we're significantly weighted towards the surface. Did you catch all that? So the end result is that it looks just like I showed you. Which is a very classic Minecraft look. Alright, so now we're going to teach you about biomes. And this is going to be so much more fun uh, well, no, it's going to be exactly the same amount of fun. There's never any difference in the amount of fun my videos have. Uh, grassland, desert, and ice. We'll just do three, just like before. So the big difference between the biome type and the terrain type is that the terrain type can vary quite rapidly from chunk to chunk, and that's okay. It gives it a very nice feel, makes it fun to navigate. Um, but the biome type, we can't do that. It would feel extremely choppy. So we need to have a biome type uh, function when we get the biome type. Instead of getting the biome type for a specific x, y coordinate and having it vary, uh, what we're going to do instead is we're going to get a weighted biome coordinate. So down here in uh, get terrain for get god, these are all out of alphabetical order. Everything must be in alphabetical order. All right, so there we go. Uh, so the statics are all in alphabetical order now, and we can add a new one called get biome. So the key here is that it's exactly the same as it's exactly the same as this guy. Although instead of casting to terrain types, we obviously cast a biome type. But we can't do it quite like this because that means that every single uh, chunk will have its own biome and will have this very, very patchwork land. Instead, what we really want to do is. Uh, uh, actually, I'm going to add another biome type, so I'll change the number four. Oh, and so instead, of what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, say that x equals mathf dot floor to int uh, floor doesn't matter x divided by 100 uh, let's go ahead and make our biomes a little bit a little bit bigger than that how about 160 
and then z equals mathf.floor z divided by 160. And what that means is that uh, for 160 spaces, you're going to have the same biome type. Now, the other option we have is we can weight this so that it's partially that weight and partially the biome's own weight, which is what we'll end up doing in the long run, or the chunk's own weight, which is what we'll end up doing in the long run because we want the edges to be um, not crisp. We want them to be wobbly. And the way you do that is you, uh, you have... Uh, the biome type fade as it gets further away from the center and then you you can fade in. We'll, we'll deal with that much later. And I'm going to add another one called forest. Okay. So here we get the base terrain. Look at all, this is all of our terrain stuff here. Let's go ahead and just um, blah 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 blah. Okay, so before we get terrain and do any of this terrain stuff we are going to need to get a biome. Like so. And then what we're going to do is when we actually go ahead and set up this XYZ thing, we're not going to set everything to 1. Come on. <sighs> Later on, we're also going to have to make these into uh, uh, defines instead of uh, trying to remember all of the time. All right, so what we've just done is we've changed it so that the top two layers on those kinds of fields are going to be high. They're going to be ice or or, uh, or snow. Now, we can also make it so that um, instead of going to y is less than tile height, we could have some kind of modification where it prints above that rather than cutting down into it. Um, because what this means is that if you dig away the snow or the sand, you're going to end up with a, a little bit of a cliff. But that's fine. Um, you know, just do it however you would like to do it, whatever your, your vision is. So here you can see we've got two biomes. We've got the desert biome, and we've got the, one of the abnormal biomes. And you can clearly see that the desert biome really prefers to be sandy. So that's the basics of a biome. Uh, but this is a little bit short. Why don't we go into a little bit more detail? Uh, we need to pass the biome to all the brushes. Uh, now at this point we can start to think about maybe we should optimize these a little bit and since we have just a little bit of extra time here I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, this is not a free function so let's go ahead and pass the terrain in so these functions don't need to actually calculate it each time they get called. Um, but we will also have to change that up here which is fine. We grab the terrain there, we just go ahead and pass it in. I think that's everything. Yep. Alright, so uh, we passed it over to the land brush, but now we actually have to have it so the land brush understands that it's getting one. So when the land brush gets its own biome, 
it can do a lot of things. It can do a lot of options. It has an infinite number of options. Um, but one of the things that uh, we're going to do later is we're going to create brush packs that are intelligent. For now, we're just going to brute force it. Uh, you'll notice I took out the thing which makes the mountains nothing but digging holes. I just wanted to show you that was possible. Now we're going to do something that's a little bit better. Oh, not grassland, what was I thinking? Alright, so we've made it so that the desert will have sand, the ice will have ice, and the forest will have pillars, i.e. our stand-in for trees at the moment. Oh, and I got some errors here. If you cook a million times, it works faster. All right, so this time we got some snow. Some snow with some cactuses in it for some reason. All right, so I'm not exactly sure why we've got water in our snow. Did we accidentally make it so that it's water rather than ice? We may have. Yes, we did. Alright, so here we are. Now we've got ice lands that actually have ice in them. So obviously, uh, this is a very basic way of making biomes. Now, if you aren't satisfied with the biomes as they are, guess what? We'll be learning better methods later. For example, this is obviously a very silly set of biomes. So you may end up, for example, taking the average of four biome chunks or five biome chunks, so you would look 200 meters to the left, 200 meters to the right, and average things together, and you could start to talk about biomes in terms of whether or not they are hot or cold, or wet or dry, uh, rather than just having defined biome types. All of that stuff we're going to discuss later. Um, how much later? I don't know. Uh, at least two or three more episodes later. But I want to show you how easy it is to create biomes and allow you to play with them as you see fit. Biomes are also going to be a big part of your design in your head, um, because most games are not going to need all biomes, and having all biomes is just adding bloat to your game. So, for example, you may end up wanting biomes to be uh, limited to different kinds of jungle biomes, or maybe rather than biomes, you want uh, how technologically advanced an area is, or how habitated an area is. So it goes from being just blasted wasteland to being city, um, and that can be fun too. I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to show you next episode. Maybe I'll show you how to build inhabited looking ruins. Something cool like that that we can polish our land brush system on. I'm going to go ahead and make it so that the sand goes a little bit deeper. Alright, anyhow that's it. Hope you enjoyed it.